know how sometimes you have an itch while you're in public that's right inside your nostril? Like, no boogie funny stuff here. Legit itch. And you just gotta... I don't want you to be ashamed anymore. Sometimes you just gotta itch the itch, no matter what it looks like. Don't judge me. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to makeup. All right, you beautiful babies. Before we can look like the best case scenario of a double eye infection, we gotta take it back a few steps to naked face. Well, definitely not totally naked. I already kicked on a bunch of pale people fluid and brow so that we can skip the base steps, but jumping right into the fun with step one. I am taking a NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk as a base to cover my lids in white. If you don't have this or any of the products mentioned, that is more than okay, just use the closest thing that you have. The important thing here is to get the lid as light as you can with a cream color so that the white pigment coming up next will stick and show as well as possible. I'm also using that in my lower waterline to keep our eyes looking nice and open later when we have a lot of darker shadow underneath. The white pigment I'll be using is Makeup Forever Star Powder in 90943 which I love for this because it has a tint of pink when it hits the light, so it'll complement all the rosy colors that are coming, but again, use what you got. I'm using a dense, flat packing brush to tap the pigment directly onto the white cream base. Keep your head tilted forward or to the side when using pigments to avoid fallout. Next, I'm using ColourPop's Summer Love and Shadow on a fluffy brush to lightly begin brushing some of that color into the outer crease of the eye, blending as I go. I use a mix of circular and small swiping motions while slowly pulling the brush away from my skin as I move higher towards the brow. I'm also pulling that color onto the outer corner of my lid and fading it out towards the middle of the lid. Using another flat packing brush, I'm laying that same peachy shadow under the lower waterline, trying to keep the white on the actual waterline clear though. You can put this on haphazardly at first just to get the color down, but be sure to blend this out a lot with a fluffy brush after. I wanted this look to be particularly smoky, so I blended pretty far down, but do it to whatever degree that you wish. Using that same peachy color, things are getting a little unusual here in the inner corners of the eye, right under where the brow starts. I'm using a fluffy brush and a lot of product to gently sweep small arches, leaving this a little messy and unblended with the brush marks still intact. It may not seem wearable to a lot of you, but I really like the way that this addition changes the overall shape of the eye makeup from far away, and also, Fluff the social idea of wearable, because anything you're wearing is, by definition, wearable. Do what you dig. Next, I'll be taking my VV Dirty Enigma Shadow from Melt to start adding those deep smoky corners. I'm using a small pencil brush in the crease at first just to lay down the color where I want it, in the outer crease corner from around the middle to directly above the outer end of the eye, but without actually connecting it all the way down. Not connecting it down on the side is how you get the illusion of a cat eye without winged cat eye liner. Leaving it open and light on the sides will give the illusion of lifting the eyes. Use the same maroon shadow and brush to pack the color tight under the lower waterline, and then use a fluffy brush to blend out both that and the crease area. Take a black shadow, any black shadow, and we're going to repeat exactly what we just did with the maroon shadow except in a slightly smaller area so it doesn't completely overpower that maroon. Lay the color down in the outer crease and under the waterline with a small pencil brush, then blend. The only difference being that I actually blended this out with pencil brushes to keep the black concentrated and contained. To do this, I took the pencil brush with leftover maroon shadow on it and lightly tapped or swept over the black until it was sufficiently smoky. Blending with a little bit of maroon shadow also helps prevent the black from looking more gray when it starts to blend out. It keeps your colors as rich as possible when working with warm shadows. Quickly, I'm adding a tiny bit of that leftover maroon and black combo on my blending pencil brush into the very inner spots of those inner arches to give them a little more dimension. Then I went through one more time with that original fluffy brush to make sure that everything was as blended as I wanted on both the brow bone and well under the lower waterline. Carefully add mascara to the upper and lower lashes, making sure to avoid getting any black specks on your lid. Then, if you're a lash addict, I think wispy or separated chunky lashes like these Complement the look best so that you can still see the light color on the lid easily. <laughs> Lashes make the best difference. Mm. Now, you could leave it like this, but I was feeling sparkly, so I'm adding glitter. I'm first using a glitter adhesive from Violet Voss to get my lid nice and sticky, but if you don't have this, you can also use a very thin layer of clear lash glue. While our glitter adhesive is still sticky, I'll be adding a mix of white and silvery glitter. The first is OCC's Fade Glitter, and the second is from the Too Faced Nikki Tutorials collab called Glitterally. Yes, literally. 
<laughs> Sorry, that was awful. Don't sweep glitter on. Pat firmly, and just like with pigments, try to keep your head tilted forward or to the side as you work to avoid fallout on your cheeks. Glitter, no glitter. Glitter, no glitter. My vote is definitely glitter. Which do you zombies like better? Time to tie in the eyes with the rest of this pale potato face. Step one away from potato status is to contour. Since I am at my lightest today, I'm definitely making sure to take a cool contour color because warm contour colors on really light skin usually look too orange, even though they work on the middle range skin tones just fine. I'm also applying a peach blush to keep the warm tones throughout the face. And I put on a highlighter after this, but it appears as though I didn't hit record. Whoops. Then I'm taking a nude lip pencil that was unnecessarily difficult to apply and lining all the way around my lips, obviously. I'm filling that in with Makeup Forever C107 lipstick. This is from their new collection, Artist Rouge, which I am really digging, but any warm nude tone lipstick will work. I also thought about pairing this eye with a dark crimson lipstick, and I still think that would look super sexy. So if anyone tries it, please tag me, I wanna see it. I wanted to alter the color of the C107 lipstick from a tan to a little more peachy and give it some ombre lip glam action too. So I took their white lipstick from the same collection, this is C600, and I'm placing that in the middle of the top and bottom lip in layers, blending out between until I get the intensity that I'm looking for. This look is maybe a bit bold for some of you, but remember you can always alter the color palette to something else, like using all neutral tone tans, browns, dark browns instead of the peach maroon black. You can remove parts like the really smoky underneath area or the arches at the bridge of the nose. While I do these to give you the specific steps to a specific look, you can take any tutorial on this channel as a template for your own alterations. Please subscribe if you'd like to continue seeing more, and I'll catch you zombies for the next video. Bye! Feeling brown today. A wild doge appears. This is a good look for my mouth. Oh my god. What if this was like trendy to just... What would you call these? Lips? Paste lips? I can't put that in the video. Sensor. <laughs> You'll never know what I said. <laughs>